On this episode of Shareable Science Beyond the Blog, we'll talk about the UK variant of the virus, what it is, what we know and don't know, and how concerned we might need to be. Welcome to Shareable Science. Science you can share. You may have already heard about the UK variant. I've seen headlines that run the gamut from the sky is falling to eh, no big deal. Um, and the answer lies somewhere in between. First of all, it's often called the UK variant because it's a specific version of the virus that was identified in Great Britain. And over the last several weeks, it has become the predominant form of the virus in many parts of the United Kingdom. It's one of the things that has actually led to the recent lockdown in the UK. But that said, this version has also been identified in lots of other countries, including the United States. So we probably shouldn't call it the UK variant. It actually has a scientific name, B117. There's also a much longer scientific name that we're not gonna worry about. But as a reminder, the SARS-CoV-2 virus contains an RNA-based genome, so it's genetic instructions. And that provides the information that tells our cells how to make all the components of the virus. Like all viruses, the SARS-CoV-2 virus changes over time. Its genome mutates. Some of those mutations are not important at all. Some of them are potentially um, informative and change how the virus behaves. This virus typically mutates pretty slowly. So scientists were surprised to discover that this particular variant has 23 genetic changes in it. Now, some of those are silent, six of them are. That's like the difference between one type of flower and another. But 17 of them are potentially meaningful. And what we don't know yet is if potentially meaningful is like, I added a quarter of a cup too much sugar, or I totally left out the sugar and put salt in in its place. That's what the science is telling us, the impact of these changes. Now, if you want some more background on that, I'm gonna refer you to the September 16th Beyond the Blog video where we talk in detail about sequencing the genome and making distinctions about variants and, and mutations and strains. What we do know, and the data seem pretty clearly to tell us, that this combination of changes actually leads to a virus that is more transmissible. In other words, it infects more people. It may be 50 to 60% more transmissible, at least that's what the early data are telling us. So this version of the SARS-CoV-2 virus is capable of infecting more individuals for each person that is themselves infectious. We still aren't sure how, there are two leading theories. One is that these genetic changes make it easier for the virus to bind and attach to our human cells. So there's a greater likelihood that you can bind and then infect. The other theory is that these changes actually increase the amount of virus that your body is producing. Maybe even a thousand fold increase in the amount of virus. So that would mean there's more virus in my nose and throat. When I cough and sneeze or talk or sing or breathe, I would be spreading more virus to those that are within the space around me. We'll see which or both of these are the common factors. But here's the key issue. The virus being more infectious, more transmissible, means that in a certain population of people, if someone has this version of the virus, they will infect more people and you'll have more individuals get COVID-19. And we know a certain portion of the individuals that get COVID-19 develop more serious side effects. So more infections means more individuals with serious side effects, which means more hospitalization, which is a challenge because many of our healthcare systems are already at their breaking point. That's the cautionary note. Now there are some other questions we'd really like to know that we don't yet have the information around. The first, does this version, does the B117 variant lead to more serious symptoms? Does it increase the likelihood that someone that gets infected will get sick? And does that also increase the likelihood that they will die? 
And the answer to both of these questions right now looks to be no. Again, we're waiting on some more data, but I think people are increasingly confident that the answer to these are no. Now, the question that we don't fully have an answer that we'd really like is how do these changes impact our response to the vaccine? And here's why that's important. Eight of those changes are actually in the part of the genome that gives instructions for how to make the spike protein. And the spike protein is what our vaccines have been targeted to recognize and build an immune response against. So if you change the spike protein, do, does the vaccine potentially no longer recognize the specific virus? And the early data and the work of viral uh, vaccine experts says that's not something that we need to be concerned about. We need more data, but the early suggestions are that the vaccine will recognize different types of changes in the spike, will recognize the spike protein even if there are different types of changes. So here's what we've got to be aware of. We now have a version of the virus that has acquired um, a burst of speed, uh, the ability to sprint um, moving into this stage of our COVID-19 marathon. I know you see people getting the vaccine. That provides me such encouragement. I would imagine it does for you. But we can't let down our guard. We need to continue the things that we know help reduce the spread. Social distancing, masking, sanitation, hand hygiene, staying away from crowded, close indoor spaces with lots of other individuals. This is not something that we should be frantically concerned about, but it is something that we need to pay attention to as we continue moving our way through the pandemic. That's a lot of content, everybody. If you know somebody that would find this useful because they're trying to figure their way through the headlines, please send this to them. As always, thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Shareable Science Beyond the Blog. Take care.